on the Slip and Dip podcast. Oh, beautiful, man. Woo! Slip and Dip podcast. Back in your life after a two-week hiatus. Happy Easter, everybody. We even grind on the lowest day. My, t- my teammate, Matthew Wells, Kendrick Johnson in the house. Episode 96 in full effect. We will have friends of the show, Michelle Karate Hottie Watterson, recapping her big win over Caroline Kovacavich at UFC ESPN two weeks ago. And we we fast forward to three weeks down the line. We have Jerry Cannier give us a preview of what he plans to do to Anderson, the Spider Silva, the GOAT of the MMA middleweight division. He gets his shot to put the GOAT on his resume. Man, like, 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 oh, I'm, I'm forgetting. We for all fresh off the heels of Crawford Khan. We're getting to that tomfoolery. And also UFC uh, St. Petersburg. What's up, man? What's going on, man? It's uh, It's been a crazy couple of weeks for me, personally. You know, I've been missing fights more than ever. But, hey, I've been making up with quality family time. So, it's been good. But, yeah, I've been, I've been having to put my full faith in Twitter and, and all the recaps, man, all the news sites to keep up with everything. I haven't been watching as many fights live over the past couple weeks as I would have liked. Well, yeah, we, 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 not complaining. I, I guess since we since not we since we on, on a, a bridge version, we we can go we can go even all the way back for God um, about um, UFC two thirty six. Oh, oh, uh, uh, Eddie Asano and Justin Poirier getting new belts. Two oh, great fights. Two probably. I told you. Oh, come on now. I told they you. they they both were they both could have went either way. I told they you. both could have went anyway, but Pasta and Sanyo, we, we I told you he was gonna have to go through some fire if he did get the bell, which That's he did. Right. So yeah, pops to him, he, he proved that he's not just a, a a cool customer. He can take the blows. He has a good chin. I still think he get hit too much. Somebody will get his number, but hey, pops to him for getting the bell. He got the job done because when the money was on the table and I and I, I, I Kevin was coming on strong, he showed up and showed out and did what he had to do. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and that's like, that's, that's, that's respect. Let's respect to Israel. We come on the show. Respect your weight, stuff. brother. Championship level stuff. That championship level stuff. When there was other ones in the they call it. They people say it as a cliche. Like you be at a sports bar, championship rounds. It's round four, but a lot of people don't take that to heart. He took it to heart when the money was on the table. He went and got that belt. Yeah, no, no doubt, man. I wish we that we had an episode to talk about it when it was more fresh. But yeah, hell of a fight. Same, same with Dustin, man. Dustin went out there, put those paws on Max Holloway. Yeah, even though Max was putting those paws on him, <laughs> incredible fight, incredible fight, man. I'm, I'm glad. I'm just glad to see Dustin get some gold around his waist, man, because he's yeah. one of those fighters that I wanted to see get to get to that championship status at some point in their career. That fight had a lot of circumvents, a lot of what eighties or 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 like the uh, six degrees of Conor McGregor up in that fight. That show you how great of a fighter <laughs> Conor really is. Nobody yeah. else is. Nobody else has done what he done to both of those fighters, and also. Um, if you're sitting at a 145 division, you know you got to go 25 minutes with Max Holloway just to compete because you ain't going to get him up out of there. <laughs> you yeah. know, going well that you're going to go 25, and you better hope he don't finish you. All right. <laughs> and, uh, to me, I, I, they, they were the losers of the night, <laughs> the 145-pound division. So as long as he stayed there, ain't nobody 145 can touch yeah. him. It's like, yeah, they, man, they, I got to go 25 they, minutes just to compete? They were the losers, and they were just sitting just at home to spectating. compete. They were just sitting at home spectating, and they were the losers. Because they don't got that power that Poirier got. He stayed in there. Yeah, it's crazy. But yeah, let's move on to some more interesting, uh, not interesting, but more recent things. <laughs> not more interesting. No, those are certainly the most. <laughs> Terrence Crawford and Amir Khan. I'll sum it up for you. Amir Khan wanted up out of there. It was a low blow, Terrence Crawford fans. But that's part of the game. It was no bad intent. But uh, Amir Khan didn't want no more smoke. He already got put on his ass once in the first he, round. He, he didn't want to go. He he didn't want he didn't want to go touch go night. He had a bit f- flashes of that Canelo fight, which I was there personally, which gave him a two year hiatus. Literally, he didn't fight for two years. That's how brutal of a, of a one hit a quarter that Canelo gave to him in um, 2016. Yeah, he didn't want any, any more of that smoke, man. He no, was up. he was he was reaching. <laughs> it was getting beast up. He was reaching. He was he winging was, punches, bro, like it, an it amateur. Wasn't a, it wasn't a good wasn't a good performance for him. Uh, by any means, but uh, shout out to Terrence Crawford getting it done, man. I'm I'm ready to like again, like I, like I tweeted out to the fight, man. Wake me when when Spence versus Crawford is a thing, or wake me when Spence versus uh, Sean Porter is a thing. I don't, I don't miss me with all the politics. I'm done. I'm done with the politics of boxing. It's ridiculous. To make these fights, 
That's a good thing about the UFC. We see the fights. And yeah, fights people, made. But, yeah, y'all talk about Dana. That Dana don't do this, or the UFC makes stuff up because they do make stuff up. But at least they let you get to see the damn fights. Yes. When people are in their prime. Yes. Like the fight we just saw with, with Kelvin and Zania. We didn't catch these fools when they broke in their 30s. 100%. We got them at 27, 28 years old, and we're set up for what could be an easy trilogy. Yes. If they fought three times, would you be surprised? Uh, I would be, actually, but... Still, <laughs> your, your point is very valid. Your point is very valid. Um, so speaking of UFC, they did have a card this past weekend. I didn't watch very much of it. Again, I was doing family stuff on Easter weekend. Go figure. Um, we was so. watching it. We, we knew that the other Reem or the Delicious Man, whatever his nickname is, this fight, uh, Al- Alice Overeem was going to do his thing. He handled his business and did what he had to do. Yeah, that fight played out exactly as I thought it was going to play out. Um, I expected him to do that, and he did. So <laughs> that's exactly what happened. Um, other than that, I mean, there really wasn't much to else. Yeah, really wasn't much else going on on that card. Um, a lot of, you know, European talent on the card, of course, uh, doing their thing. Um, I guess the other notable, I guess, stateside thing that happened was Roxanne Montefiore beating uh, Valentina's sister, Antonina Shevchenko. So that was a good one for her. Um, but yeah, man, uh, UFC got another card coming up. Jock Ray is back in action. Get your alligator emojis ready if you're watching live on Saturday. <laughs> that one's in in, in uh, Florida at the bb and Center. That's actually a damn good card. A lot of recognizable names throughout that card. I'll try to pull it up real quick to show you guys if you're watching along on YouTube. Um, if you have not made yourself aware of what's going on this coming up weekend. Uh, so here it is. And uh, Jock Ray, of course, fighting Jack Hermanson in the main event. Greg Hardy. On the last episode, episode 95 of the show, he is in the co-main event to the, much to the chagrin of a lot of MMA fan, hashtag MMA fan out there, Alex <laughs> Oliveira, Mike Perry, Glover Teixeira, Lon Kutalaba, John Lineker, Corey Sanhagen, another friend of the show. So many recognizable names on this card. It's going to be a very fun card. Prelims also, Ben Saunders, Andre Arlovsky, Carla Sparza. Man, so many good names on this card. I will be doing my best to watch as much of this as possible. Jim Miller, Jessica Panay, Court McGee, Diego Lima, Jody Escabel. Good card. Good card. I, I, I'm going to go ahead and say I'll, I will be watching this one from beginning to end. So I'll put that out there. We'll see. But uh, shout out to boxing, man. A lot of big, not, not big name boxing fights this weekend as well. But there's well, a, lot a lot of, of big solid. names are being, I'm being active. Possibly yeah. Danny Garcia, and Angel. I'm working behind the scenes to get them on the show because Angel is one of the funniest guys in combat sports. Right, right. <laughs> uh, Danny Garcia uh, got Adrian Granados about it in the seventh round. Did what he did. Put volume, punches and bunches, and just basically beat him down to just uh, of a accumulation type knockout. Yeah, it was a good fight for him. Good fight for him. And uh, Tia Fima Lopez, of course, also got the job done again. He is, uh, he's an exciting fighter, man. He's exciting. I think he's ready for I think he's ready for that main event next time out, right? He's yeah. got to be in the main event next yeah, time and out. Also, uh, our guy Shakur Stevenson looked at good. He fought a veteran guy. He used a very technical way um, to um, beat him. I don't think he got hit, but like maybe 30 times the whole fight. Mm. And then yeah. he went on the rap and said that he'll fight anybody at 126. I don't know about that. Because there's some champions out there. He needs to get a little bit more season. But he definitely is a future champion, without a doubt. Yeah, for sure. It's no matter when he's going to get that strap, not if. Right. Yeah, he's, he's amazing, man. And, of course, he's got the celebrations to go with the to boot, the backflip. Always seen that backflip on point. I mean, hey, he's doing all the right things to get people to notice him. So, like I said, if he's not in the main event slide his next time out, somebody's doing something wrong. What do you think about him fighting Lomachenko that keeps saying in the next year? I'm with it. I'm with it. Again, it would be a, a good fight for both guys. You know, I don't know if he's in his prime yet um, with uh, Tia Fimo, that is, but he's got a lot of hype surrounding him right now. So, I mean, why not make it happen? Why not? I, I don't see a reason why that shouldn't happen. But again, boxing going to boxing sometimes. So, who knows? <laughs> who knows? But, uh, yeah, guys, like uh, Kendrick said at the top of the show, Michelle Watterson coming at you first, Jared Cannonier coming up second. Uh, both fun interviews, as always, with two very fun people. So, hey. Enjoy the rest of the show. If you're watching on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, click that little bell for the notifications as well. we got some more videos coming throughout this week, I'm sure. Uh, some live reaction to crazy MMA news like, uh, I don't know, like Darren Till getting arrested for trashing a hotel room, for example. We didn't make a video on that, but that's the thing that actually happened. So, uh, you know, hit that subscribe button. If you're listening on iTunes, please, of course, leave us a review there as well. Five-star rate it. 
and uh, just helps the visibility out. Again, free things. You can help us to grow the show. We would appreciate it. Just help spread the word. Slip and Dip Podcast, episode 96. Enjoy the rest. We will be back next weekend with more fantastic guests for you. Peace. Please welcome back, friend of the show, one of the best female fighters in the world, one of the best strawweights in the world, Miss Michelle Karate Hottie Watterson, fresh off her win at UFC on ESPN over Carolina Korkavich, where she got a unanimous decision and dominated the fight from beginning to end. And in my opinion, your best all-around performance in the octagon. What, what about you? What, what about you? Um, in the UFC, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. You know, I, I, I like finishes better, but I, I'm glad that I was able to go all three rounds and kind of uh, display all, all aspects of my, of my, um, of my abilities. You know. Is it, is it cool the fact that you got a lot of hype? What I mean by this, like you got a lot of promotion, and you weren't even on the um, the main event. It's like you had your own karate hottie bomb slot. You had the the cool piece on ESPN um, sixty and the piece in the magazines. Like I thought you were the main event. If I didn't know no better, <laughs> you know what? It just um, the timing all seemed to fall into place uh, perfectly. The the ESPN piece and the magazine and all that that was actually filmed when I was. Um, getting ready to fight police. Um, but they, you know, with the editing and all of that, they, they had to, it, it took that long for it to come out. And so, yeah, I mean, it was crazy. I, I would say like the hype behind um, fighting on a huge McGregor Khabib card, probably, I mean, arguably one of the biggest cards of the UFC. Um, and uh, going from that to fighting on, on, on a smaller card where I'm, uh, it was, it was, it was quite crazy. Cause even it was like Philadelphia, um, the hotel that the UFC booked for the fighters was outside of Philadelphia. We were, I think we were in Delaware. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, really low key. Uh, and, uh, it's just like a different vibe, but, um, you know, I just, I feel like I've been on a roll and, um, I'm just going to embrace whatever comes to me. And, when when the ESPN pit bit came, I embraced that. When they when they came to us and asked us to do uh, the destined piece, I said, "All right, let's do it." And you kind of just um, you. I think as a as a fighter, it's kind of one of those things you don't want to distract yourself from getting ready for the fight. But at the same time, you have to take advantage of the opportunities when it presents itself. So um, you know we're we're not in the spotlight too often, and and if they offer it, you got to take it. And, uh, another question for me: How have you improved as a fighter since the Tisha loss? Because you're definitely not that same karate hottie. You got got the kicks, you got the ground game, you got your thoughts that you're gonna get in once a fight, and you're gonna keep them down. And what do you do to keep people down? Like, of course, I, I've seen you in person multiple times. It's like I wouldn't think like that's the lady I want to get on top of me. But whatever you do, it seemed to work. Because when they go down, they don't get up unless they get tapped out, or they got to go to that uh, lift to that that stool. Uh, it's all in the hips. <laughs> 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 but for real, it is like, it really is. I have a lot, like all, I hold a lot of my, my weight, my power in my hips, my lower body. And I think that you talk to any, um, any jujitsu practitioner and they'll tell you it, you know, you have to be able to understand your body and where to place, um, your, your leverage, you know, and, and you, you have to be heavy on them. And uh, the, the smallest people can feel like a ton on top of you if they know how to place their leverage in the right places. But, uh, I mean, I feel like what has changed with me since my loss to Tisha, honestly, is just allowing myself to, giving myself permission to be where I am. I, I think that so many of us, uh, sabotage ourselves because we feel like we're not ready or we feel like we don't belong and, and we wait for approval from, from the higher ups. We wait for approval from the fans, from the commentators, from this person and that person. I, I, if I waited for approval, then I would still be left in the gutter. You know, like my, I, I was raised with somebody that was really crucial, like really judgmental. My mom, you know, my mom, I, I could get straight A's and one straight A minus and she wouldn't approve. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I just was just, 
I was fed up with um, letting myself down and getting in my own way. And uh, I, I knew that I had it in me to win and to be the champ. And um, if I wanted to get there, that I just had to go out there and, and perform. So how much is it like for you, you know, watching you fight, your technique is like so much on, more on point than like pretty much all the, you know, your opponents that you fought where it's like you go out there and you're able to utilize that technique. And we've talked about this before when you're on the show, but it was just like, again, when they're against Carolina, it was like, man, like just what you were talking about earlier, the way you can keep her pinned to the mat using the proper technique and not necessarily just like overpowering, you know, your opponent. And, st- and the crazy thing to me is like every time you get in there, like when I'm on Twitter and the fights are going on, people are still shocked that you're able to do this. Like, have you not watched her fight before? Like, this is what she does. Like, she does, like, the little things that, like, with so much precision. And that's how you, like, dismantle everyone. And it's it's kind of crazy that people have not caught on. Like, that needs to be, like, your main attribute. Like, when they show, like, the, you know, the little graphics on the screen. Like, they need to have that on there. Like, precision technique. Like, that should be, like, the thing that's, that shows up. You know, I think it's something that does go, um, th- that does fly under the radar. And there are some fighters like that. I would say another fighter that's like that, uh, except for he's like he, 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 Dustin Poirier. You know, I feel like he, he he's kind of as, as much of a badass as he is. He's always looked, which is crazy. He has such an amazing resume. And um, it wasn't until this last fight when people were like, damn, really? But it's just because, like, he, he's just so smooth with it. And, you know, he kind of just, like, flies under the radar. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I just um, – maybe it's just stylistically. I, I, you know, I was talking to a couple of my coaches, and they – they told me that I've reached a point in my career where I, I'm, I shouldn't be focusing on what I what I'm not good at. I should be focusing on what I'm good at, and I'm not a heavy pressure throwing bombs at you fighter like Andraj. I'm not um, I'm not a boxer, you know. Um, I um, I think that I have finesse, and I think that uh, something that I am really good at is. I'm, I'm a good blender. I can blend things together well. So going from, you know, stand up to wrestling, from wrestling to grappling, from grappling to ground and pound, I feel like that's what I've kind of been able to, to hone in. And um, uh, I guess that's just what I've kind of attributed my style to, which kind of sucks too because um, – I get overlooked for the shot because I haven't had any lately. I haven't had any fancy knockouts or, or, or submissions, but those things you can't, you can't set up those things. I mean, I mean, you can't expect those things to happen. You obviously you want those things to happen. We prepped for them. I wanted so badly to get a submission. I wanted so badly to get a head kick. Um, but the, it just doesn't happen. And you, you kind of, you, you have to, you can't force those things because then you, you put yourself in a dangerous position as well. So you just got to fight your fight and whatever happens, happens. Okay. What, what do you think about the state of the 115 pounders? Because it's kind of like y'all got like two things. You got the belt with Rose and what she got going on. Now she finding jobs. And then you got like that lo- that that white shark that everybody keep talking about. That's Tatiana Suarez. Oh, who? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> 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 oh damn! I'm being a hater. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, no, I'm so, joking. So, 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 so what, 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 what you think you you fit in and all that, and just the state of the division? Because that got a little everything in there. <laughs> that got multiple storylines for sure. Okay, so listen, listen. <laughs> all right, so I I've always gunned for the for the belt. If if I'm if I'm fighting. I'm, I'm fighting to get to the top. I'm not fighting to cruise. Um, but my main objective before fighting Carolina was to beat Carolina. And so um, that's where my head was at. After I beat her and after I felt like I was able to beat her pretty soundly, and, and then I took a look at the division, I really do think that I should be next in line for the title shot. Um, for, for multiple reasons. I've been... I've been in the UFC longer than both Tatiana and Nina, whoever wins between the two of them. And, oh, and before we get there, let me backtrack a little bit because 
Tatiana has a pretty big um, challenge in front of her with Nina. Nina's another one of those girls that kind of has flown under the radar, but she has really good understanding of range. She has really good heavy leg kicks, really good jab, keeps her range. She's able to keep Claudia out, who is normally really good at coming in, closing the distance, and taking you down. So, I don't know. We, we just kind of have to play it out by ear to see what happens with that. But um, coming back to me, I feel like I've been in the UFC longer. Every single one of my fights since I've been in the UFC, excluding my UFC debut, have been with top 10 girls. Every single one of them. The only two losses that I've had are against the champ and one of the only girls to beat the champ. And um, I just, I feel like if you're, if you're talking business, it makes sense for me to fight the champ. I have a million followers. You know, I'm, I'm likable. And, and we can make it a story. If Rose wins, then it's a rematch. If Anjaj runs, then it's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Will you watch tape of that Joanna fight if Anjaj wins? Because that was one of the best technical performances I saw against her. Because we talked, it was up, in fact, it was up here in Dallas. So me and Matt, actually, it was like the first fight we ever watched <laughs> together side by side. We were tripping because you watch Keep Up With Boxing. You know who Vasily Lomachenko is? Oh, yeah, of yeah. course. Of course. I, hey, you never know. You you busy doing your thing in the octagon. You, you may not be watching boxing. <laughs> but she looked like, she looked like, Joanna jo- jo- looked like Lomachenko that night with her footwork and stuff like that. So, but that's iconic. It's one of those things that's easier said than done to re- re- reinvent that. But that's the most I'm not seeing. And Andrade look average. I think about that. Um, yeah, we'll watch tape. You know, if we end up having to fight Andrade, obviously. Everybody has their tells. Um, I don't think I would try to emulate Joanna because her and I have different styles and body types. Like I couldn't keep her out the way that Joanna did because Joanna's way longer than I am. So I'd have to have a different game plan in that sense. Plus, I feel like Andrade learned a lot from losing to uh, Andrade learned a lot from losing to Joanna and went back to the drawing board and corrected a lot of things. And and I feel like uh, Andrade is a different fighter now than she was when she fought Joanna. That's a good point. It's a good point. But yeah, so you know, when you look at obviously like your your team, you guys plan out things like you know not just game plan, but game plan like <coughs> extremely well. Like I I would argue like One Jackson Wade teams. teams like probably have like the highest level of like game planning around. You know, especially considering you know those guys that like the John Joneses of the world who seems to like analyze like every aspect of the fight possible. You know. Mm-hmm. So it's like, are you guys, do you guys like kind of pre-analyze your future opponents because you don't have a fight schedule right now? So like, what's it like, you know, in the gym day in and day out? Is it just like you working on your technique or are you guys trying to, you know, pre-game for who may be next? Um, I, I would say a little bit of both. You know, we're kind of, it, it really, everything's kind of up in the air because, um, because the girls that I'm gunning for are, are already scheduled to fight. Sure. So... Um, we try to make it out to Brazil and see those those girls fight out there. I'm really excited to see that fight and and um, how that out and then and Tatiana and Nina in June and then we'll see how that turns out and then we can kind of revisit the topic. Um, but yeah, I think that MMA is an interesting sport when it comes to breaking down fighters and analyzing and trying to game plan because. I think there is something to be said about seeing your future and, and being confident and, and where you want your future to go. But um, there's so much uh, that happens in, in MMA that is out of your control. And if you try to predict the future and it doesn't end up happening, then where are you left? So you kind of have to be open and, and be able to adapt with whatever comes your way, which is another reason why I love MMA is because I think that that's one of my strong points is, is being able to be like, okay, this isn't working. Let's do something else. <laughs> true, true. So, like, you, you mentioned a second ago, like, how hard are you putting your foot down? Like, I need, I need my title shot. Like, how far, how hard are you sticking to that, like, when the UFC calls or, you know, like, how? Are they going to see the mean Michelle? Like, no, no I, 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 I got one better. Title I, shot. I, I got one better, Michelle. <laughs> Bring Joe Silva. I mean, not Joe Silva, my bad. Sean, what's on last Mick. Is Meg Maynard? Yeah, Mick. Oh, Meg, <laughs> bring Mick Maynard. Uh, you know, we've been asking. We're just uh, we're we're coming on shows. We're talking, and we're just trying to um, 
we're trying to stir the pot a little bit. Okay, I'm with that. <laughs> Uh, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It, the the strawweight division is a very um, competitive division. I think it's the most stacked division in the female on the female side of the UFC. And um, I think it's 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 about time we bring some light to that and 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 you know bring a little tension to to the top of the of uh, the mountain. I'm with it. I'm with it. Got you. You always hey. throw those numbers in their face too, like when they call. <laughs> Look at my followers. I have more followers than these other girls. <laughs> People love me I more. You know what? I I actually I'm not the one talking to him. It's my husband, and he's the main one. Um, the truth is, as a fighter, you don't you kind of are like, and especially at this point, um, you're gonna end up fighting all those girls one way or another. True. Mm. But I'd rather fight him as the champ. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Tell, be a lot bigger. Tell me this: when you training for that title shot, can we come out there for a day to Albuquerque and and, and get some behind the scenes uh, as you and Jackson Wink get ready for that for that strap? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, man. Come out here and hang out for a little bit. <laughs> I've never been. That'd be that'd be a way. Get to hang out with you and uh, your girl Holly Holm and <laughs> go to Albuquerque. Ch- check check. I had done none of that. <laughs> There's really not much to do in Albuquerque, but you can come if you want. <laughs> like Jackson Week is is Albuquerque, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, we we've been serious, so we will take it to a little fun side. So, uh, do you watch the NBA? Are you a basketball fan? No, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> I, I yeah, I haven't been able to keep up with it. I've kind of been like in the zone lately, just with my fight career and everything going on. No, 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 no. I heard about you switching jerseys with Carolina, so I, I don't know if you got that from Dwayne Wade, because Dwayne Wade on his last tour uh, that year, retiring this season, he was sure changed jerseys with a player on the opposite team. So I thought you watched mm-hmm. the NBA, like, hey, let's bring this shit to NBA. I, well, I know that they do that in soccer, and um, I just think it's such a it's such a meaningful thing to do, really, right? Because um, you it, there are more things than just a shirt that you're exchanging in that octagon. Um, there are some fights. I, I mean, even if you just watch the fight with with Corey and, and Holloway, and and the fight before that um, with uh, Stylebender and uh, Gaslam, and Gaslam, those guys, those guys gave each other years of their life. I mean, if we're being honest, right, hundred percent. You know, and so um, I just think it's like, yeah, like. Any, any fighter that steps into the octagon is a different person when they step out of the octagon and um, to have something to hold on to and to look back at and to appreciate, I, I think is, is, is cool. Yeah, 100%. So keep it on, keep it on the fun train. Like, uh, how's, the, how's the Girl Scouts cookies going? <laughs> we just delivered um, the thousand box of cookies that Tony Robbins donated to the local food bank on Thursday. So that was really fun to do. That's and uh, Araya sold, I don't know, over 3,000 boxes of cookies and is um, getting lots of different prizes. So she's she's waiting on that and is very excited for that. That's awesome. She's out there hustling. She's out there hustling. Anybody close to her in terms of that? Or is she just like, y'all need to get like me? <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy because um, I, I don't know what... Somebody has has her record beat here in Albuquerque. I was trying to get get it so that she had, was the person that had sold the most in Albuquerque, um, but somebody has a record beat. So, dang, that's crazy. Yeah, them girls are hustlers. <laughs> right, they get after it. They get after it. Yeah, my my little uh, cousin used to sell them pretty hardcore. She was hitting up everybody. So I, 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 it gets pretty intense. It's pretty you easy. can't say no. No, you can't. You can't. You can't. What's your? Do you have a favorite? Um, I really like the Samoas. Those are my favorite. Uh, I mean, I'll eat them all. <laughs> the, but... Can't go on with thin mints. Yeah, I'm, I'm thin yeah. guy myself. Everybody <laughs> loves thin mints. It's crazy. <laughs> Samoas aren't bad either. They're they're up there. I mean, it's like for me, it's like thin mints and then everything else, and I'm still eating all of them. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. So, what's what's on your schedule for the next couple of couple of weeks? You know, you, I know you mentioned you said you're going to try to go out to those fights, but anything else mm-hmm. in the works? Any other TV shows you got working? We're on? really busy, and and I think if you were talking about you know as far as like me putting the pressure on or whatnot, um, 
I mean, I'm not in any hurry to take a fight anytime soon. I feel like I've gotten to a place where um, I can take my time and, and ask for what I want. And um, I can wait. If, if they don't want to give it to me, I can wait until they're ready to give it to me because I have a lot of things going on in the horizon. Um, I, I want to go to the fights in March but, uh, or in May. Bottom line is I want to fight for the belt. Um, I've, I've, I just did an audition for a really cool movie, a couple of cool movies actually, and um, so I'm excited to hear back from those. Uh, from those, and working on our own uh, at home six week uh, workout program, and we're launching um, a bunch of cool stuff. We're launching an app. We are um, we're going out to California. Uh, going out to um, Canada, Calgary to do um, a seminar out there. So I'm really excited about that. And yeah, we just got lots of stuff going on and we're really excited about. Well, we see you on MTV again. That was cool. See you with, 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 with your girl, Justina Valentine and uh, our guy, I like my guy, Johnny Bananas. <laughs> oh, he's, <laughs> he's on my short list. You need, you need to introduce me to him. He's on my short list. <laughs> yeah, he's crazy. I love, I really enjoyed doing uh, the challenge and it was just fun. I just felt like a kid again. Being able to compete in something outside of MMA, it just, um, you know, it got my got my adrenaline going. Um, I was competing against guys that were twice my size. I'm, I'm over here trying to tackle uh, CT, and he's like <laughs> two something, and I'm not even. I'm fearless. I'm trying trying to tackle him. I'm getting my lip busted. I got my tooth chipped out back here. <laughs> um, but it was fun. It was so much fun. So you definitely go go back on there again. I, I would. I think it would be fun for sure. I had lots of fun doing that. Um, I, I I think it would be fun to to go on while and out with Justina. Can you freestyle? And, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but give me some lines to memorize. There you go. <laughs> they, they don't want you know. Don't talk about the script they give some of these people. Don't talk about that. These are little trade secrets. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, like, <laughs> so my last question for you is do you watch Game of Thrones okay I have not okay I it's crazy because I, 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 you're not the only one Shell. I haven't seen I don't, I don't see what the big phenomenon really? nope I haven't seen it I'm alone I guess it's so crazy I mean I know that it's a huge thing I have not watched it I really do and I'm a binger I will I will shut myself out from the world and binge on a good season um, but I have not, I, I think I tried to get into it and I couldn't get past the first episode. Mm. And then I tried to do it again, try to get into it. And then I, I, I couldn't get past the first episode. So we'll have to get back into that. I'll tell you what, that was, that's how it was for me personally. It took me a while to get through the first season. Like I would watch one episode and come back to it mm -hmm. a few weeks later, watch another one. I was like, man, like this, it's slow. It, it does start off really slow. But then like when the good parts happen, it's really, really good. And so like I finally decided just like, all right, I'm catching up. So yeah. 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 I mean, I'm, I, I'm been watching a lot. I, I just finished the season of Hannah. That was really good. It was just about this young, like badass girl that <laughs> is, is raised to always be looking over her shoulder, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I just finished watching that. Um, Billions, we, I watch Billions. I like uh, Breaking Bad, Dexter, um, Vikings. What else have I watched that I I'm pretty was pretty obsessed with? Ozark. Ozark was really another. good. I love Ozark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ozark. The Hundred. Have you seen The Hundred? I haven't seen that yet. That one's good. And I think I like that one because it's like a lot of strong female characters, you know? Okay. I need to check that uh, out. Yeah, check it out. It's really cool. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I do. I will binge on on, on season. <laughs> What's Little Karate Hottie been up to? You got her competing in any, any athletic competitions? She's in gymnastics and she's getting ready to um, – She's getting ready to go uh, try out for the competition team. So we'll see. You know, she's eight years old. Um, and I think what we're going to try to do is take her out to Japan next year for the Olympics so that she can kind of get a feel to see um, those arenas and 
and just open her eyes to the possibilities. <laughs> Amazing. It's like you, you give her the appetizer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, look, babe, you could be on that stage, you know? And then you see her eyes light up and be like, I'm going to do it. And then she's going to come home and start bouncing off the walls. And you're going to be like, what have I done? <laughs> she's going to write, write, write a hell of a book at the worst case scenario. Yeah, I was hanging out with Holly Holm when I was in, in kindergarten. She came with my mommy to my school. <laughs> she's uh, she's around amazing people. Uh, and it's, it's truly amazing. I mean, when, to- when Tony Robbins decided to buy another thousand, he, he personally called us and left a message and invited us to um, one of his events. So we'll be going out to his event in Dallas in July. Gotta hit us up. You know, that's our, that's, uh, that's our backyard. Yeah. Yes. That's cool. Well, I t- tell your husband, Cowboys going to be, we, we got to talk some Cowboys. Cowboys are heading in the right direction. We were having question okay. marks last time we talked to him. After this last year, feeling good. Has he converted you right. or, you, or you don't got time to watch football either? I watch football. I'm from Denver, so um, I like I like the Broncos, Denver. But <clears throat> because I've been with my husband for so long, he tries to convert. He's tried to convert me. And actually, um, our our first football game that we did go to watch was at the the the, Dow- the Cowboy Stadium. Jerry World. Um, yeah. Yeah, yes, and yes, it was uh, the playoffs. It was who were they playing? I forgot who they were playing. But we got to hang out in. Um, with uh, with Des Bryant's family. Oh, that's cool. Oh, you gotta hang out with the luxury yeah. people. Here's a crazy story. My first job in the media game out of college, I covered Des in high school. So I seen all them crazy people in mm-hmm. their home elements. They're, they're, they're oh. interested. <laughs> they bought that life. <laughs> yeah, his mom was hugging me and she was like, ah! and we were like, watching the game all together. It was fun. We had lots of fun. <laughs> Could you imagine fighting there one day? If they, me, me and Matt seen a boxing fight there and it was pretty intense. Imagine a UFC fight there. <laughs> yeah, that would be amazing. Be pretty dope. For sure. Get in, get in Dana's ear about it. Make it happen. He said he wants, it to, wants to do it. So next time that phone rings, just drop that in there. We, <laughs> we need to make that happen. Right? And as someone like you with a million followers, hey, I'm just saying... <laughs> I'm just saying, hey, you got to be on that card. World. In a, um in a perfect world, it would be John fighting for the belt, Holly as the new champ fighting for the belt, and then me fighting to get the new belt. Oh. <laughs> so you, so you, so you, right so you thought about this then, because that king's like straight to the top of the dough. <laughs> you may not be able to freestyle some music, <laughs> but you can freestyle some fights. <laughs> you have to, you have to have dreams, right? You have to, you have to start from somewhere. You're. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. I like, I like the little shout-out to Holly there, too. I'm looking forward to that fight. That's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. She's, yeah, she's going to shock the world again. <laughs> right? All right? The, the, would you just be – I know you're a, you're a fan of the sport along with the fighter. Would you say if Amanda beats her, regardless if she knocks her out or she just gets her hand raised, would she be the best woman of all time, hands down, with that hell of a resume? Like, she's checked off everybody you can ch- you need to check off, from Ronda to Cyborg to Misha – to even um, Jermaine, like, and then Holly would be on there. That's a hell of a resume. Yeah, only she's not going to beat I Holly. I knew that was coming. I knew that was going to be the answer. I knew that was the answer. I knew it. So then Holly would be the best female fighter of all time. <laughs> she has to fight Cyborg, though, right? Again. Uh, okay, well, let, I'm get, let, let me just put this scenario out there. If... If... Nunes fought Cyborg before Holly did. Would she have had the game plan that she did when she fought Cyborg? You know what I'm saying? Fantastic point, like, Michelle. It's a fantastic because point. I feel like Holly exposed a lot of Cyborg's weaknesses in fighting her and taking her into deep waters. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think Cyborg, um, well, I think what Amanda did that Holly um, couldn't was she played on her ego and got her to exchange with her. Because if you, I know you, you watch the sport, if you, you know, you know who Clarissa Shields is, don't you? I yeah. do. I just see her yeah. fight. Yeah. And- Cyborg has been training with her the last year or two because she kind of felt like people like um, Holly and Amanda was catching up to her, and she was trying to keep that gap. And she's being very technical. We saw what how she was not technical. What happened to her? So there was a reason. So I, I agree with you hundred percent that Holly, uh, if Holly would have knew what she knew now, I think Holly would have fought her completely different. For sure, I agree. I don't know what. Do you, um, what do you think? Going down with uh, so Cyborg is fighting on that card. Is she fighting in Brazil? 
Uh-uh. I didn't think so. I, 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 I don't point. think Cyborg is Cyborg with UFC. I thought, who, who was she fighting? She was supposed to fight uh, Jermaine, Jermaine oh, Grandi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's on that card, though. But yeah, you're right. Yeah, her and Jermaine finally fight. going to fight. Yeah. Uh, uh, it'll be interesting to see how she comes back from that loss. But it didn't seem to, to really knock her off her, her track at all. She was... She she seemed to be in good spirits about that loss, you know. Yeah, I I, so. I always tell people I know you've been around her. She has this persona, and she's completely the opposite. She's a very nice lady, and like she's like a okay. mega star. Like I'm at the ESPY Awards, and you got all these football and basketball players, and you got people like DC, Tyron Rose, all the champions were there, and, and Cyborg. They're coming straight to Cyborg. I was like. Wow, she's a mega star. I didn't even realize how big a deal she was until I saw her at the ESPYs. And she didn't even know what to do. She got people like Aaron Rodgers want to come on and take a picture with her. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's... Yeah, so I remember, yeah, she's a very, she's uh, she's a sweetheart. You know, she has a good heart. And um, the truth is the majority of fighters do, you know. They are peaceful people because they fight. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, right? Anybody ever got you mad ever? Like this, like, like on a personal level, like, fuck this bitch, we're going to fight. Like, are, are you, are you, are you, are you, are you, are you, you said you're able to separate personal and real talk. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I can't, I don't think I, I, when I, if I fight and I take it personally, I think I, I, um, I'm not able to flow like I want to, you know, hmm. I, I feel like if I took it personal, I'd be crying as I was punching and you, you know, have you ever been so mad that you started crying and you're like, <laughs> I, that would be mean. It just wouldn't be. Any good? Well, that's all you fight somebody like Carolina like, like that you could like invite to your house and spend the night and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing: I almost think it's harder to fight somebody that you like because you don't want to hit them. You know, you don't. But um, it was a huge, um, it was a huge improvement on my end to be able to do that. So uh, you know, that's one of the things that I can take away from that fight and, and be proud of myself for doing that. And something that I had to take with from that fight if I did want to fight Rose, because I do I like Rose and I respect her. Um but I wanna beat her. You know? That's a way to end it. And new it. and future. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can't wait for it. Michelle, thanks for coming on the show again. It's always fun talking to you. Can't wait to see can't you wait till you get the title shot. Yeah, in the uh, Cowboy Stadium, right? That's right. <laughs> she got the thing you picked she, she that day. day. Three title fights going down. Holly John Jones, Jackson Wink special in Cowboy Stadium in Jerry World. Jackson Wink special. <laughs> Let's get it. Get it. Let's get it. All right, Michelle, thanks for coming on. We'll talk to you again soon. Always appreciate your time. No worries, guys. Thank you. Please welcome to the Slipping Dead Podcast. Coming back for the second time. Back in the house. He has one of the coolest names in MMA today. One of my personal favorites, friend of the show, and he will be walking to the Lions Den. That is real deal in Brazil in two weeks at UFC 237 to fight the great Anderson Silva, Mr. Jared Killer Gorilla Cannonier. What's your mindset heading to get ready to head into enemy territory? Uh. <clears throat> The same as it always is, you know. Uh, just got to be ready for any and everything. So, another day in the life, you know what I'm saying? Does it make you bring you any peace? In fact, we all know Anderson's highlights and what he's done for the, for the sport and in the sport. That I won't say that man don't exist, but that guy that's kicking Vito Bell for is not walking through that door. <laughs> Does that give you any comfort, or is just like you looking at that guy that was basically sparring with uh, Adesanya like five, four or five months ago? No. Um... None, none, actually, none of those. You know, I just look at him as another, as another, as I don't know, man. He's Anderson Silva, and he's capable of all the things Anderson Silva's capable of. So, I'm just gonna go in there, prepare for the best, uh, you know, Anderson Silva we've ever seen. So, cool. So, so you don't have like that kind of like that, that almost like that aura of respect, like you know, like when you heard uh, Israel Adesanya talk about him, he was like, he was like standing across the the cage from his idol like and he he said like that was the hardest thing for him to prepare for so like you don't have like any of that so you're just going in there like hey it's another man like he's gonna try to hit me i'm gonna hit him and whatever gonna happen gonna happen absolutely just like that i <laughs> <laughs> right. see i think that's gonna make for a better fight because i don't think somebody's like been in there with anderson like that you know i think like everybody's got that thing like israel some, some chris whiteman because whiteman didn't have that yeah chris whiteman didn't have it <laughs> for sure you know i don't know um 
everybody has a different approach to a fight. You know what I'm saying? Um, my approach is the same. I know I, I, I go in there knowing exactly what I'm capable of, <clears throat> and that's what the other person has to deal with. Um, and at that, you know, and and and, and uh, to go along with that, I'm prepared to deal with whatever they got too. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, <clears throat> and here I'm on the phone. <laughs> we'll be on the conversation. <laughs> but, uh, he said, hey, dude. Hi, dude. Hey, dude. Hey. What's up, little man? Say hello. Say what's hey, up. Hey, dude. What's up? Hey, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, sorry hey, about dude. that. Hey, dude. Here, stop, stop. But um, <laughs> that's my approach with any fight. You know what I'm saying? It's just another person uh, who's capable of doing great things as well. Um, and, uh, you know, we both signed, signed the contract. We both signed waivers and all that other stuff. So we know we already know to expect when we get in there. So, it, so when we get in there, I'm going to do my very best to do what I need to do to come out of there completely unscathed. I want again. I want a flawless victory, and uh, if I can get a fatality, that'll be really good. <laughs> <laughs> How's it cool to, to be like a car, like, um, like a like a uh, on a wanted poster to be on the the official poster for the fight? That's pretty cool. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure. I, I was happy for you, that's, so I'm pretty sure you probably because like that's me. <laughs> that shit is nice, man. My homeboy, one, one of my homeboys, <clears throat> excuse me, one of my homeboys. Uh, Send me a picture. Send me a picture of the messenger of a billboard in Vegas. That they have of the uh, of me, <clears throat> of just our bout, my uh, me versus Anderson Silva. A whole billboard with our faces on it, and uh, that's the first time my face has been on a billboard, as far as I'm, as far as I know. <laughs> so um, this, you know, all that shit that goes, you know, all the stuff that goes along with, you know, fighting a guy of this caliber, fighting at this level, you know, um, fighting for this company is is a. Uh, it's a, it's a, uh, what's the, what's the word I'm thinking of? Anyway, it's good. You know what I'm saying? I'm loving, I'm going to, I'm going to bask in the light and, uh, I'm not going to let it, uh, I'm not going to get blinded by it though. We're, we're two weeks out from the fight. When will you be in Brazil? Will you be in there any different? You show up on Sunday and then go through the week or you can go like a couple, like a couple days before that, like 10, 12 days out. I'm going to fly out. I'm going to fly out whenever they fly us out. You know, they usually fly us out for fight week. So that's when I get there. We have to be there. We have to check in, uh, I think, Tuesday. So uh, they'll probably fly us out Monday because it's a long-ass flight. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Also, no, no special precautions there for the fight, for the for the altitude and all that craziness that you got to deal with that's in Brazil. Is there altitude there? I don't know. I hadn't looked at it. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. What is I'm that? Not sure it's not that. Mexico City, but it's a little bit different change, of course, I think. A little bit higher, I think. To, I forget exactly. Compared to here. It's not, like, it's not Mexico City. Like, you're going to fall out like you up in Denver. It's not that bad. But <laughs> I know a lot of fighters go, go there early to adjust their body and get acquainted to it. I'm just going to go there and find some um, soil, some uh, ground, some trees, and uh, ground myself is what I'm going to do when I get there. So, uh um, as far as elevation goes, you know, it's a different story. I hadn't, you know, I hadn't really looked into it, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, but I, you know, I'm, I'm always ready to go five rounds. So this is just a three round fight. So, you know, um, I'm ready. <laughs> that is another question. How big a deal is to push the pace? Cause at the end of the day, as great as he was in his prime, he's a 43 year old man. How, how difficult is it for no, me to push the pace? No, how big a deal is that to push the pace on him? Because he's 43 at the end of the day. And we all know MMA, combat sports, boxing, it's all a young man's game. You definitely got the age in your favor <laughs> in this. I think you're how old are you? Are you 35, 34? I'm 35. Almost a whole decade younger than him. Yeah. Well, um, Anderson's, a, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't really consider age as a factor, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? The older you are, the more experienced you are. The more experienced you are, the more... You know what I'm saying? He, he's, he's been doing this. He's had longevity. He, he doesn't take damage in his fights. The only reason why he's been out for so long is due to those, uh, you know, horrific injury, the horrific injury, he, you know, he suffered. But uh, he doesn't take too much damage in his fights, so he knows not how not to get hit. And the fact that he wins tells me, that, you know, shows, proves that he knows how to counter. So um, with that being said, you know, my, my style is to go for it anyway. You know, uh you know, it's got the, the pace is going to be set by me. You know what I'm saying? Unless unless they want to change that, and then I will adjust accordingly, and then uh, hit the reset button on your reset button to make you, you know, because <laughs> that's how it goes. That, that's how I approach the fight. If you want to, you know, come in there all, you know, 
trying to set the pace and stuff, I'm going to hit you real nice, like, because you got to put yourself in a position to get hit. So I'm going to hit you, and I'm going to reset. I'm going to reset your whole your whole thinking, and take back control of the fight. And uh, you know, uh, again, do what I got to do to get my hand raised. So um, that's what I'm prepared to do. You know, what I'm saying that's what I'm prepared to deal with. You know, and uh, again, you know, my fight style is to come forward. And uh, if you want to bring the fight, I got a fight. For you. <laughs> So have you or were you concerned, you know, when Anderson, like you mentioned the leg injuries and things like that, that he's had to go through, you know, he failed the uh, failed test for PEDs after that. Do you have any concern about that? Like him, you know, coming in on some potentially tainted supplements or anything like that? Is that even a thought that goes through your mind? No, I don't really concern myself with anything that has nothing to do with me getting in there fighting and getting my paycheck. Okay. If he does get, you know what I'm saying? If he, if he as far as you know PDs goes I don't, I don't know the whole situation with him uh in his you know the whole supplement thing i don't know I, I to be honest i really don't care so uh it has nothing to do with what's going on now he hadn't been flagged for anything so speaking of which i just got tested the other day again like the third time this year we're not even halfway through the year <laughs> How, how's that go? Can you walk us through that? Because I see how NFL stuff go. Uh, 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 he, he's a, he was a Pro Bowl player at the time, so he's pretty legit. Played for the Cowboys. Me and his partners are playing a pickup ball in the middle of his um, driveway, like yeah, like a full court. And these people from the NFL yeah. show up, and literally they kept our black asses outside, and they walked him in his house. And there's only one guy at the door, and one guy followed him anywhere. It take, took like thirty minutes. I'm like, it take that long to be in the cup? Yeah. I like his series. Is this like you saw it like that? They just show up like. Like, well, you know, we have we have uh, the uh, whereabouts thing, so they have to, so we have to give them our schedule every quarter. Let them know where, where, when we're gonna be, gonna be when we're gonna be training. You know, what I'm saying when we, where we're gonna be at stuff like that. So they can show up just about anywhere randomly, um, as long you know, as long as they according to the schedule. Um, <clears throat> but um, normally, you know, they've come to the house before, but normally they show up at the gym um, <clears throat> on you know random days, but. Uh, and uh, you see him, and then he, you know you see these side of people, and you know it's you know it's on. So uh, try not to hope. Hopefully, hopefully you can pee real quick, and you can give him those ninety uh, miller milliliters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, to, I couldn't give him my ninety this past one, man. They called me. I was like, oh man. <laughs> I just got to doing a, a little class, so I had I was sweating and shit, and uh, a little dehydrated. But um, I had to do a partial, so I couldn't give him the full ninety the first time around. Right. Does it does it kind of like I mean are you annoyed by that process or are you kind of more happy that you know it's it's part of the I guess grander scheme to to keep to keep the sport more pure in a sense? Both, you know, it's annoying. It's one more thing you got to deal with. One more thing you got to do when I could be you know focusing on training. You know, what I'm saying I was in there getting trying to warm up and stretch out, get ready for training, and, and, and you know here they come asking me to pee in a cup. So, but you know um, they're doing the job and. Uh, I can appreciate the job. I respect the job. And uh, if anything, the job, you know, makes the sport, you know, uh, safer for, 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 for everybody and uh, makes it cleaner. Um, clean is good. Cleanliness is next to godliness, as they say. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, man. And, uh, yeah, bust these motherfuckers, man. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> Are we gonna see this kind of killer gorilla when you be on the stage when you got to Brazil? Cause I don't think a lot of people know that you like a chill guy. Like you somebody you go to a sports bar and go watch a boxing fight with, then you be wilding out Dallas style <laughs> with that big po with that <laughs> no, big pokey in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't get too I don't get I don't turn up too much, man. Cause uh, I'm big and I'm I'm dark skinned, man. People get scared when they see big dark skinned man rampaging around like that. <laughs> I don't. I don't need no cops showing up, giving, you know, harassing me for for no reason, and then you know, I ain't trying to be another, uh, you know, another uh, what they call it, news some shit like that. Yeah, you, you don't want to be a hashtag, yeah. right? Don't want to be a hashtag. Hell no. <laughs> I'd rather see my picture on this uh, on this uh, camera right here. I'm just, I keep looking at myself. I don't be looking at y'all during these damn interviews. I be looking at myself. I need to quit. I'm so fucking uh, so fucking vain and shit, but. Uh, it's all good. Making sure I'm looking good for the camera, man. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. You, you can the yeah. lighting, making sure the lighting's right and everything is good. 
I've, I've had some experience with this. <laughs> hey, Yuck, you ready to go down? Are you ready to fight today? You ready to fight today? Huh? I'm ready, not ready to fight the scales, but I'm ready to fight. <laughs> That's the thing, right? That's the thing, right? I know. Don't, don't get my I mean, co-host I can, started I can now. You, you, you set the buzz. I can cut the weight, but it won't be a it won't be a proper yeah, weight yeah. cut. Oh, you, you set the buzz where you so, got my you got my co-host fired up there. Oh, I can't stand the whole weight cut again, man. I can't stand it. I can't understand yeah. it. It ain't too bad for me, you know. It's just I have I have a a, a, a down pack plan, and uh, it works out every time. So. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I show up to five week, I'm going to be under 200 and uh, come I'll probably be hitting 185 during during five week, to That's be cool. honest. You think it's crazy, though, dudes wake up on Thursday um, Thursday night or go to bed Thursday night weighing like 200 and cut down to 185 by Friday morning? Like, that's a, and it, it's like, what world does that make any common sense, damn sense? Yeah, I don't do that. I don't do that. That's yeah, crazy. No. I just I, I, I eat cleaner is what I do. I don't eat as much meat. I eat light. I eat just enough to fuel my body to for the workouts that I need to do, and uh, and I feel great. You know what I'm saying? You don't. We don't have to eat as much as what we usually eat. You know what I'm saying? We don't have to walk around as heavy as we as we walk around. Our bodies will be way more efficient. You know what I'm saying? Our our digestive systems won't be constantly working, constantly digesting, which is burning energy all day long. So. Uh, it's crazy because during five week, that's when I feel my I peak, my energy peaks, everything peaks because I'm not eating as much. You know, my my body gets to sit and, and uh, it's more. What's the word? Uh, more. I don't know the word, but it's in, it's sort of. Uh, I don't know. Intermittent fasting or something yeah, yeah, yeah. like that. That's that's a huge thing these days. A lot of people are doing that now. Yeah. A lot of people are doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, have you have you given thought to like? You, you've got some really impressive names on your resume already, as it stands. You giving thought to like how it's going to look having that in that W column, Anderson Silva, and like what that means for your potential next fights. Like a guy like that, you get a win over him, especially you get a stoppage win. Like people are going to like throw you in the title picture, like one away from the title picture, maybe even you know. They may. Um, uh, I've thought about it mm-hmm. briefly. Um, and you're right. It could put me right there in line for uh, for a title shot. Um, it could solidify it could solidify myself in the top tier of the middleweight division. So next fight could be a tough middleweight. You know what I'm saying? One of the one of the top middleweights, and uh, again, bring me closer to the title. Um, which is you know the the, the uh, which is the better thing for my career. So uh, as long as that's happening, it's all good. Um, <laughs> But um, again, I've only thought about it briefly. You know, I don't really, I don't have it. Uh, I'm just concerned with what I'm doing now, and that's training and you know, living my life to the fullest and being happy doing this every step of the way. And uh, in three weeks, I get to fight one of the best middleweights to ever step in the octagon. And uh, when I win, and uh, how, depending on how I win, is going, you know, could shape the future. So. I'm ready for whatever happens. Besides living your best life, <laughs> I guess how like you do it. <laughs> uh, do, does it bother you the fact that none of these top guys call you out or put your name in their mouth? You think a, a win over Anderson, they gonna have you? They gonna, that's gonna get their attention. They gonna have to. You gonna be on their radar. They are gonna have to recognize you. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know what they think about me. I mean, I don't even know if they know that I'm here or not. You know. Uh, if I was them, I would definitely know who else is in my division, who I could be fighting. So, uh, you know, uh, you know, fighters at this level, you know, most MMA fighters are, are generally intelligent people. Um, so I would assume that these people know how to do their job. So uh, um, I think I saw in uh, one of uh, Adesanya's interviews, I think after he fought uh, Anderson, they asked him who would they like to see fight. And he, did, he mentioned uh, Machida, who's not, who's not even in the UFC anymore. And he mentioned me because he wanted to see what I can do. He hadn't seen a lot of me, so that's probably what a lot of a lot of the other uh, people in the division are thinking as well. They, you know, they see this guy. They don't know what he can do. He's always a little bit better every time we see him in the octagon. Um, he's definitely a little bit smaller, um, but uh, you know, they probably ain't got nothing to go off of. So uh, either that or just you know, they got some respect. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's good. They mom, they mom was raised them right. So. Uh, 
I don't, you know, I don't run around. I don't run, you know, me personally, I don't run around talking shit about nobody. You know, what I'm saying I'm in the, I'm in the UFC. I'm in the middleweight division. There's no point in me, you know, picking and choosing who I, who I want to fight first. I'd like to fight them all as long as they pay me good. Uh, so uh, I'm getting paid good. So, uh, and uh, I don't see myself depreciating anytime soon. My value depreciating, so I'm only get paid more and more and more. So, line them up. That's dope. And again, and again, it's nothing but respect. You know, we're coworkers. You know, we're fighters. But at the end of, the, you know, we're not employees or anything. But at the end of the day, we work together to create to make money. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's one of the down. I think that's one of the bad things in in combat sports in general. But I, especially in the UFC, you know, what I'm saying we've heard the talk of unions, unions and all that stuff that fighters need to unionize and and which is true. You know what I'm saying? I guess with the landscape the way it is, fighters do need to unionize. Just to play the game, and I've been watching Game of Thrones lately. Oh yeah, and uh, it's just another play. It's just another uh, way to play the game. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is. And uh, you can either play the game or, or uh, create a new game or some <laughs> shit. But um, but I think fighters need to communicate with fighters. You know what I'm saying? So uh, yeah. maybe things, maybe maybe uh, more steps will be taken. Um, I don't actively reach out and talk to fighters, you know what I'm saying? Um, but you know, I'm respectful to each and every fighter, and uh, you know, we all we all in a, have this. Essentially, we have the same goals, and we are all of our paths led us to this one point. So, uh, you know, I take my hat off to each and every uh, fighter, not only in the UFC, but you know, each and other each and every fighter in the world, and um, you know, it, it, essentially, we're all. Uh, uh, warriors in the same army or some shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like you know we're all doing the same thing. Essentially, we we're all trying to tap into the, essentially the same consciousness. You know what I'm saying? Um, so uh, I have a respect for anybody who 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 uh, who does martial arts. So as for my uh, fellow middleweights out there, uh, keep on doing your thing, keep being great. You know what I'm saying? It's, it helps me be better. I have to be great just to be just to uh, compete with you guys. So, um, and for those who think we got to fight each other, man, and talk shit to each other, get your head out your ass. There's a lot more money to be made out there. You know what I'm saying? A more honorable way to do it. So, uh, again, let's let's just, you know, let your nuts hang. Quit, being, quit playing into the cameras and shit, you know? Right, right. Yeah, I mean, that's a huge part of, like, how a lot of matchups get made these days, man. It's like whoever's... Fights get made on it Twitter is. all the time. But you, but you playing, you playing right into the hands of the people who, you know what I'm saying? The people who you claim to be in control of your life and shit. You know what mm. I'm saying? You know, um, we all do it to a certain extent. But um, you know, I can only have yeah. it so much. <laughs> what is it? Right? You want to watch your gabba gabba? Okay. Yeah. We're talking about Yo Gabba Gabba, man. I got my little man on some Yo Gabba Gabba. That should be jamming out. Stuff. I don't know nothing about that. I don't have any little ones running around. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you lucky you never got to that. <laughs> my, my kid, he's on that uh, on that uh, PJ Mass and that v- Vaporina. Yeah. And uh, what else uh, we got? Uh, uh, Yo Gabba Gabba. Get him. Oh, they got black faces. Not only do they have black faces on it, but I think it's good. And it's wholesome. It's it's is me. I think it's music oriented. You know what I'm saying? And uh, nothing but good stuff, man. And it's fun. I love watching it. That's dope. That's dope. Yeah. And I'm a grown ass man. I can I can handle watching. I can't handle watching PJ Masks. <laughs> or, uh, Paw Patrol. It's a lot of the shows that my That's kids watch. <laughs> I've watched some Paw Patrol, but I, you know what I'm saying? I can't handle it. <laughs> It's not. It doesn't. It doesn't touch yeah, you. Right. You know what I'm saying? The way the music. The way music can touch you. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Uh, it's just a different way of. Uh, it's a different type of kid show. And uh, get your kids on some Yo Gabba Gabba, bro. It's only four seasons of it, but they be jamming out. They got biz, They be having cameos from Biz Marquee and a uh, whole bunch of different actors and stuff be on there. That's dope. Yeah, he be so, feeling it. 
I know Boosie Collins. I, know, I, think, this, I think I saw Boosie Collins on one of the episodes. So, speaking yeah. of old school, you going to help us get an old school fight on the show. Mr. One, Ben Henderson. Former, former US, you, 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 you keep slinging me along. I find, I'm like that girl trying to get some play. And you keep telling me I'll get some. I'll get that. Man, what can I say, man? We be busy. <laughs> But I actually, I have I, I keep forgetting to, uh, to to tell him, so I hadn't I hadn't really talked to him. How about, how about May twelfth? That you get life. your hand raised May eleventh. May eleventh. You tell May twelfth that you get your hand raised. <laughs> I'm being on a flight May twelfth. May thirteenth. <laughs> hey, turn the light on. Messing up the light. <laughs> Here, okay, I forgot to turn on the show. That's what he's doing. <laughs> he, is he is antagonizing you, boy. Man, I just man. told you about Which one you want to watch? Yeah, Yo Gabba. Here we go. Superhero. We're going to watch that one. Yeah. Uh, a little bit. Of, like, I just told you about it. All right, there he is. You, you mentioned there a second ago talking about like how the music touches you and everything, but did you find that one kid and are you bringing him back down to Brazil to hype you up in the tunnel? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm not bringing him down, but he did reach out to me and said that they may be coming down. And if they do cut down, I told him I'll hook, it up, hook him up with some tickets. Are you tickets. for real? He reached out to so, you? Uh, did, did he say yeah. you on the show? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. they followed me on uh, on Instagram. And they shot me a, a message. Here, let me turn this down. That's amazing. That's cool. Yeah. Sorry, dude. You got turned down. Do you by other fighters, like, talking noise? Or say, bro, what do you think about such and such? Do y'all, do y'all communicate that way? Oh, he's like, I see you. You see it when you see him. I know you from the Dallas, so you cool. Stop. <laughs> you, Turn the light back on. You, you, you cool seeing somebody like the in the streets. No, um, I don't DM. T- I don't DM nobody to talk noise. Um, I have DM some fighters and congrats. I DM Usman when he won his belt. I DM uh, Adesanya when he won his belt. Um, I've talked with uh, Branch after our fight, and uh, I think those are the only fighters who I've talked with. On, on okay. and before, you, before we let you go, what, what, what Houston slash Dallas slash Texas rap song you gonna come out to in Brazil? That's what I really wanna know. Uh, <laughs> it, it probably ain't gonna be Dallas, but it's gonna be some dirty South shit, man. I've been jamming uh, No Limit Soldier uh, okay. by Okay, that, oh, that, that take it back, my brother, man. back to high school, boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, what, what do you think about Yellow Peasy? Walk, no, walk out to No Limit Soldier yeah. with Master P. Well, what do you think about the new school? Have you heard of Yellow Peasy? The dude, the dude care from Dallas? He, that's who Earl Spence, the boxer, came out to and just lit up at Cowboy Stadium. Yeah. That's on me, baby. Baby. <laughs> yeah, actually, one of my homeboys who live up here is he's real cool with him. And, uh, and, uh, he, you know, he tried to put me on to him, but I don't listen to any any modern music. You know, I stopped listening to people. I stopped listening to anything new, past uh, past early two thousands. Um, and and it's not. And to be honest, the wave it was it was just the wave. You know, the music got real shitty for me, and I couldn't stay and I couldn't stay in it. So I, I and, and and at the same time, I started getting into martial arts. So usually, I don't do anything if if it hasn't been imprinted on me already. It'll probably be hard for me to get into unless I have a, a deep interest in it. Um, uh, I've, I did, have heard it's on, it's on me, baby, and, and, it, and it should be jam. Um, uh, good workout, so, uh, in the gym. You know, hats out, hats out to the hats out to the player for doing his thing. You know what I'm saying? And, and anybody coming out of Dallas, you know what I'm saying? It, anybody, anybody, anybody. To be honest, you know, you ain't got to come out of Dallas. You know, if I see you doing good, you're doing good. Do your thing. So. Uh, but it's, it's even better, man. Homeboys coming out of Dallas, Spence coming out of the out, out of the D, doing you know everybody putting it down for the D. You know, I wish I was there doing my thing too and representing the way I know I need to be. But um, you know, uh, business before pleasure, and you know, what I'm saying I got to be right here doing my thing. I got I got to come out here and build myself up, and uh, you know, eventually I want to come back to my home and and uh, and do something to build that place up as well. I want to build a gym. I want to open up an MMA gym because where I grew up, we didn't have, there was no talks of MMA. There was no talks of martial arts. And uh, there was no real, real life fight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you know, you got your gimmick dojos and stuff out there. People coming to exploit people and stuff. But uh, I'm not here to exploit. I'm here to, 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 to uh, help you build yourself, help you create greatness out of yourself. And then you're going to go and spread that somewhere else. And the more people you got around you being great and being, being the best person they can be, you know, it's just going to bleed over into the community. And that's one thing, that's one of my aspirations that I have for the future. So, 
Um, uh, Dallas is in my heart always, and I'm always watching. And uh, I love my city, man. So uh, <laughs> let's keep going. Let's keep uh, let's keep creating uh, creating. So the you, you jam hella BZ in the gym, and what you ever gonna come to Fortis MMA? You know that's the new MMA team that's come out the blue, and they whooping some ass out here straight out of Dallas. Oh, I've looked them up on the internet. I've I've, I've saw these see these guys. There's a couple of guys who, who recently got into. Oops. There's a few guys who recently got into the UFC who have been looking really good, especially uh, Joff Neal. I watched him. Uh, he's been really impressive in his fights in there. There's a 205 guy, a big guy. I forgot his name. Uh, Brian Span. Uh, he's like a monster as well. And uh, just watching these guys. And, uh, again, when I watch fights, I critique as well, and, and, I, and I try to learn from them as well. And, and uh, so it, it's uh, – I've learned a lot from watching those guys out of there, so I can only imagine that the program that they that they're employing there is is uh is really good and 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 uh it's definitely caught my eye. So um, when I whenever I come back home, I'm definitely it's definitely on on my on uh, my bucket list of places to go. You know, Spencer's boxing gym. I love boxing too. You know, what I'm saying I got respect for the sport and uh and uh, I know uh yeah. <laughs> anyway, all these places I, I I've got on That's my dope. list. So one one last thing for me is, uh, are you familiar with? Uh, you know, we had our, our previous guest on the show this week is Michelle Watterson, and she's trying to get this thing started in MMA, where you know the fighters exchange jerseys like you know the soccer players do, like we see sometimes like D Wade was doing, you know, throughout this year. So yeah, after a fight, do that with Anderson. Yeah. You gonna try to do that? That'd be, be kind of cheap though. Let's get this. Why train not, rolling. man? That'll be man. Let's that'll get this be dope. That'll be dope. That would be that would be awesome right there, man. That's that would be a perfect tradition. Um, I think fighters we have to start our own tradition. You know what I'm saying? We can't, we can't just bite off the soccer and do <laughs> oh, the same thing. Besides, 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 but besides, we got to give we can have have to give an article of a closing that we walk out to back to the uh, to the company for them. Yeah, to they do have something like with. contracts for like uh, memorabilia companies and things like that too. So whatever. Yeah. Clear but um, clear. you know, funny. A funny thought I have regarding, you know, exchanging of T-shirts. It actually came after the branch fight. After the branch fight, because after the fight, somebody gave me his jersey, and I put his jersey on before my interview. So I was wearing his shirt at the at the post fight interview instead of my own. But um, uh, uh, somebody was saying uh, uh, after I gave it back to him, they're like, "You should kept it." I'm like, "Yeah, it would have been like me keeping the skin of my victim or some <laughs> shit like that." And I also thought about, you know, if I come up with somebody talking shit, I'll be like, I'll fight you for your jersey, you know? And it'll be like, I skin my opponent when I'm finished and I'm wearing his skins around and yeah, some shit like that. Yeah, man. It's dope. But um, that's just a funny thought that I had. Right, Nothing right. serious I ever thought about employing. But, uh, it's you know, uh, who knows? I'm sure MMA fighters come up with some sort of tradition yeah. eventually. I, I just like that idea because I see it, you see it in baseball too. Like, you know, a lot of a lot of different sports, like, do have that little tradition of exchanging that, so... It'd be cool to see something. Yeah. Like especially, especially after the last two uh, main event fights we had in uh, where the hell were they at? In Florida? No, they weren't in Florida. The the, the it, last it, two, yeah. the, uh, inter, the two yeah, inter- inter- fights. Yeah. 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 Those that would have been that would have been something to remember. For sure, for sure, man. Um, man, thanks for coming on once again, man. Always, always glad to talk to you and stuff like that. Because people, a lot of people don't realize, like, because like we always get up. How y'all get these people on the show? I said I, I try to be cool with everybody. Like me and Jared talk during the Cowboy game or something. Just what's up? Yeah, my man got an S on his chest. He's D Town's best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I got. I do what I, I do what I can. You know, I try. I gotta represent the best I can. So I'm trying to be. I try to be the best man I can and represent the best I can. So when people think and see and, you know, make that comparison, they won't say that, oh, there's some cats out here shaking their fake and claiming they from Dallas, but they live way over there in Alaska or they live over there. But uh, I ain't been, you know, I left home. I left home when I was like 20, when I was 22 years old. You know, I hadn't been back home in in over a decade, but uh, I'm born and bred, man. You know, it's in my heart. It's in my blood. It's in my soul. So uh, That's dope, man. But you know, that being said, you know, I ain't gotta prove that shit to nobody. You know, I know I know where I'm from and I know who I am and uh you know, all my family back in the D they they, they know what's up and all my people back in the D they know what's up, so <laughs> everybody like to hate on the D everybody hate on the D anyway, especially everybody hate on the D, everybody hate on the Cowboys and uh 
I love I love catching the flag because I, I love I love stepping up and defending my shit. So yeah, yeah, that's how it is, man. So, so, so bring so, so. bring your weak ass, bring that weak ass heat, <laughs> bring those weak ass flames. <laughs> so, so are you are you are you planning to come back to Dallas like in the next year or so? No, no, to no, move no, to visit. permanently. Oh, I definitely want to come. You, you know, uh, well, look, look, finances. Look, look. Hey, you, you know, hey, you, you knock out Anderson, get that fight night bonus. We'll, we'll be, we'll beat you somewhere out here in Dallas. Yeah. Sure, man. Uh, again, finance is pending, man. Because <laughs> I got bills to pay. I got to pay taxes. Got bills, I got man, my man said finance is pending. Got a little man running around. <laughs> I, you know, what I'm saying, I'm, I, I'm getting, you know, I'm getting these big fights. You know, what I'm saying, but you know, what I'm saying the checks ain't big enough to say here. Let me pay off everything. I ain't got to worry about nothing. Let me just go. Catch a flight somewhere. I got, you know, I got three kids and a wife. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 four extra right, plane right. tickets. Not to mention a dog. Not to mention I have to I have houses. I got, you know, I got shit that requires money. And I'm trying to. And what I'm ultimately trying to do is get financial liberation, man. That's what I ultimately want: financial motherfucking that's liberation. Good. And as soon as I get that, man. <laughs> That's it right you said, there. You said like Black Beach two years yeah. ago. We first started the show. Black Beach was like that, and now he up in movies and got properties out in Houston, <laughs> and he chilling. You think he from Texas? Because he from Louisiana. He chilling. They moved into. They yeah. Out, came across the border. <laughs> yeah. Sense, well, that's cool, man. I'm, I'm and again another guy who I'm who I'm a uh, I'm a huge fan of. You know, so I remember I remember we fought on the same card in uh. Croatia, I think that was three, four years ago, and uh, yeah, we was chopping it up, you know, briefly on 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 the way back, and uh, you know, he was cool and stuff. So, uh, and, and, and you know, just talking to him, you know, I could hear all, my, I could hear my brothers and all my cousins hear that fucking Texas accent and shit, talking all slow and shit, and uh, so uh, yeah, it's always uh, you know, I'm happy to see him doing doing the big thing, good doing all the things he's doing. So I hope he continues to to grow and and and, and uh, move forward in that in that regard. That's awesome, man. Well, May. Shit, I'm trying. I'm trying to get like him. Hey, sure. I mean, again, that's, that's a good that's a good role model to have. Yeah, you can you get the right the right names yeah. on the resume, man. May May 11th. Yeah. That that can start that snowball effect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back to the fight, exactly, man. Back to this fight. You know, I'm, I'm gonna go in there. I'm, I'm more than prepared. Um. Um. I can't wait to get in there and and uh and just be in a fight again, man. It's been damn near six months. It's been, it would have been over six months, and I'm I'm ready to get in there and really punch, punch and fight somebody. Um, you know, w- with the intent to 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 finish this person. You know, what I'm saying we do it all the time in the gym, but my intent is never to to finish my teammates. You know, what I'm saying my intent is to hone myself to be able to to be able to create that uh that uh moment. You know what I'm saying? If I land that strike, that's a finishing move right there. You know, do those finishing moves. Practice those finishing moves. And, uh, <clears throat> but, yeah, I can't wait to get in there and actually do it. So, uh, it's going to be fun for me to be in there. And, uh, and, and 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 a level lower than that, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be fun to, for the world to see it. So, Absolutely. I'm ready. May 11th against Anderson, the spider silver, the spider and the gorilla. In the Killer octagon, gorilla. The killer gorilla in the octagon, man. We can't wait to see it. I'm excited for this fight, man. Thanks for coming on the show again. We appreciate it. Always have fun talking to you. Appreciate it, man. Thank you, guys. It was good to see you guys again. Right, cool.